Okay, perfect. <laughs> now you can, yeah, turn it back, turn it, turn it on. Uh, perfect. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> Jesse Esparza drives in his cars uh, down the California coast from Sacramento and now he's on my show now he's on my show Jesse Esparza is he's on the show. Oh my gosh, Floridians, thanks so much for tuning in. My guest today, uh, a writer on Mixed Dish, a UCB Sunset legend, a absolute diva to a T, and an incredible, uh, very funny person. Please welcome Jesse Esparza. Jesse, welcome to the program. Hi, that song. Oh my God, it's like John Mayer. I get it now. I get it. I get why so many people like him. I can not sing to me with a guitar before. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Everybody gets a song uh, and- Oh, I'm... everyone gets a song. Never mind then. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but that was your song. That was just specifically for you. Uh, Jesse, Thank how's uh, how's it going, man? How are you doing uh, dealing with with the pandemic and uh, and everything? It's good. I'm doing well. Uh, you know, not as good as normal. I got a dog during the pandemic, so that's you know helped a lot with you know having nothing to do. Um, so it's yeah. good right now. I, I I am in my hometown, so you know this podcast hit very near and dear. Yeah. So it's the perfect time, perfect timing. So are you from Sacramento or just outside Sacramento? Sacramento, born and raised, baby. Center, Woo! honey. Not, I'm not from Roseville. I'm not from Folsom. I'm not from Yuba <laughs> Shitty. I'm dead center Sacramento. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. The capital. The capital. I I'm love not it. From Citrus Heights. I'm not from <laughs> Granite Bay. I'm not from. I'm not from any of those. I'm from Sacramento. So. Sacktown. Here first. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks for being on the show. And uh, first thing, want to get out of the way. Uh, we like to do plugs up top. Uh, so anyone listening, what, were, what would you like to refer them to? Uh, uh, anything you have going on or anything you'd like to plug to the listeners? Okay, you can definitely follow me on Instagram. I love a new follower. I'm at jesse underscore is underscore awesome. J-E-S-S-E, thank you. Um, I'm on Twitter as well, but you don't have to follow me on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I do write on a show called Mixed Dish. It does air every Tuesday at 9.30 on ABC. All also, right. you can go on Hulu and watch it. We need the numbers, people. We really do. I know, um, I know. Yeah, so that's basically it. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, now, Jesse, how does... How, uh, you've written on all seasons of Mixed Dish, or you've been a part all, of the show? All two, all two, baby. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully more with uh, Mark Paul Gosler's on that show, right? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's great. Oh man, that must be that must be fun. Does uh does someone like that when you work with someone like that, do they have to tell you up top, like, hey, listen, I uh no Zach Morris references, no timeouts. Uh No, I think he's good with yeah. it. I think he's in a place right now where he's like in on it, you know? Yeah. He was one of the only actors who like met with us in the very beginning and was just like, Hey, you know, hey, I'm an actor. I'm like one of you guys though. We're all the same. We're humans, you know. Oh you know, everyone was like, Get the fuck out of here. We don't want you here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let us do our job. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, long before Mixedus, we uh, we've known each other uh, in the UCB circle, and I don't. Um, and I remember you did a one minute. It was a one person show, <laughs> and just this is just like how outlandish it was. Uh, for I, I I assume the show was thirty minutes long, but for at least twenty seven minutes, you had, you had a woman hiding. <laughs> <laughs> you had a woman hiding underneath a, uh, a, 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 I guess a, 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 a sheet. A sheet. A sheet. <laughs> and she was hiding under a sheet with a keyboard, and then you revealed it. Like what? What was that? What was that? I forget about that show. How did that even come about? It was. I just. I. No one was casting me. No. I. I wasn't getting on any teams. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just do my own stuff. Did it get picked up? No. But 
you know, I worked with Steve Slaga on that show and he let me go wild. And that was my roommate at the time, Brenna Campbell. Mm. I was like, I was like, can you like hide under? She, she kind of volunteered, honestly. <laughs> so she was like, yeah. So I hid her under the sheet for half of an hour. And then at the very end revealed her. Now, was it a good reveal? That, yeah, it was incredible. No one knew because no one thought that anyone would be under that sheet. No one would be crazy enough. But And at the end, she was like, yeah, I started hurting halfway through. <laughs> I was standing the whole time bent down over my piano. And I was like, well, you signed up for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, arguably a just as impressive performance as you, who was like sweating it out. She was like, she was in complete darkness for 27 minutes. Then she had to play piano on cue. And she did yeah. a great job. She did a fantastic job. And she had to she had to accompany me singing Jennifer Hudson's uh, <laughs> I uh, fuck I, what is it what is you're the song? gonna love me or something like that and you're gonna love me and yeah, I'm yeah. and I am telling you you're gonna love me That's and a- God bless her heart you know she really tried and uh, <laughs> I, I I'm not a singer I'm not and like I was just like just just accompany me you know and I, she did something she played the piano. <laughs> That I mean that uh see I mean seeing that show just kind of sticks with me. It was just very funny and it was a big swing and it was hilarious. That was my uh, first big show at UCB that I was like I'm gonna become a star off of this. You know, didn't yeah. but you know it was a packed audience and I was very happy. All my friends showed up and it was it was fun. How many how many more shows did it take you to be a star? <laughs> two two more. Okay. The next show I did was with Connie Shin. Mm. And then the show after that was one that I did not put myself in. I don't know if that's a fluke, but uh, that one that one took off. <laughs> there you go. What show what was that, that was third show? Tanya Harding, the musical. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The name alone. I want to I want to exactly. see it again. That's the one that I was like, you know what? Everyone's going to be like, this motherfucker is just writing the show for him to star as Tanya Harding. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to put myself in it. I'm just going to write it and I'm going to direct it and I'm going to put it up. And lo and behold, it was like the most successful thing I did. I guess people really do not want me on stage. <laughs> Dude, oh, no. <laughs> well, you're great. Uh, uh, any chance of a mixed dish cameo? Or, or no, is that not happening? I did. Me and my fellow staff writer, we were in the f- finale last year. And let me tell oh. you real quick. It was the role of, we were, we were music video dancers. Because I guess yeah. in the 80s, you could go to a mall and like make a music video of yourself. And me yeah. and my friend who wrote on the show were like, we have to do it. Because it was like our goal. Yeah. Like, we have to do it. And so we got, uh, we got the part. <laughs> Thank you. And then we got, <laughs> it was basically featured background. Mm-hmm. This is a long story. I'm sorry, but it's so worth it. No, go in, please. Yeah, you know, I want to hear I about used it. To be, I used to be a background actor. And so I know the types, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. just stepping into the background tent to get fitted. I was like, oh my God. It was like going back to that world where everyone is just like looking at you and they're like, oh my God, are you on the call sheet? Who are you? That world you know? is like a Christopher Guest movie. It's like, oh, it's so many crazy. characters, a bunch of crazy people. Everyone, like some, the experts are like carrying a book. Or, you know, yes. like, because they can't, you can't have a phone in some of those situations. Some people are, you know, are like sneaking in a phone. Everyone's yes. like crazy and like, you know. It's, everyone thinks they're going to like become a star, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I, no one knew that I was the writer, you know, because right. I was just like, hi, I'm here for the music video thing. And they're like, okay. And the, the, the background woman was treating me like shit. She was like, go sit over there. We'll get to you. I was so close, Peter. I was so close to being like, do you know who? I am, you know, I was so <laughs> well, didn't make excuse it, me. didn't make it quite there, didn't make it quite there yet, I was so on yeah. the edge, but I was like, okay, and then this guy just randomly comes up to me, he's like, what music video, can you tell me about it, what are you doing, what are you playing, what's the song, what are you, and I was just like, sir, I cannot talk to you right now, yeah, you know? I gotta get in the zone, give me a I minute, I gotta get in the zone, and then, so, it was just like a music video thing, I, and they're like, okay, hair and makeup, and here I am, I'm like, oh, they're just gonna like put like, you know, a little bit of makeup on me and like brush my hair. They're like, no, this woman put like drag makeup on me. <laughs> Whoa, just caked it on, huh? Yeah, she was like, I see you. I know your essence. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so she, like, she put like a Boy George cat eye on me. And it was like, I was in the chair for like an hour. And Whoa. then the hair person was like, well, we can't just let you brush your hair. She put five weaves in my hair, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> She was I like, we can't it. let you go out like that. And so she put like five weaves in my hair, 
like pressed it, p- ponytail up to, I'll send you a picture. Maybe you can put it on some social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was in the hair chair for like another hour. We film it. It was like five minutes of filming, Peter. It was five minutes of filming. We just, <laughs> ah. we danced to I Can't Wait by New Shoes. We did it once. Love it. And the director was like, that was great. We got it. You want to do it again? And me and my friend were like, let's do it again. Mind <laughs> you, we were so late. We were running so late. We were behind because uh-huh. we because we were the writers on the finale. And we were right. also doing hair and makeup. And so like we were so late. And so we were like, you know what? Roll it back. Let's do it again. <laughs> she punished us because she made us do the whole song. It was like a Ooh. five minute song. So by the end, we were both flop sweating. It was terrible. Peter, when I tell you the finale, we were so far back. We were in it for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but you made your carrier. That's incredible, man. You How- really have to like, you have to pause it and go frame by frame in order to, you know, see what we are. But it was such a fun experience. So yes, I weaseled my way onto Mixed Dish. <laughs> Dude, that's so amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a, <laughs> and I'm sure you have like a screen grab of that frame somewhere in your, in your house of- uh, Yes, just an and again- photo. It's from maybe 20 feet away. You can barely see who's on. It's like ants on the screen, you know, but yeah. it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's incredible. Now, I want to I want to ask you something uh, before we get into Sacramento and versus Florida, California versus Florida. So you, you, you were doing all these shows at UCB uh, and you you were having like you you were struggling for a bit, but uh, you wow. did end up making. <laughs> wow! <laughs> no, oh, wow! <laughs> but, but you did make it. You did make it on some teams, um, and you were a voice that was pretty loud uh, at UCB. Not just audibly, just because you're a loud person. <laughs> but uh, you know, you were. You know, I felt like when you talked about UCB, it's like you you became one of those people. Uh, what was um What was the journey, and what do you think the point was where you found your comedic voice? And I wa- I, wa- I also want to ask. Along with that, like, yeah, uh, well, I'll ask uh, the other question later, but like, okay. at what point did you feel confident saying like, oh, this is the Jesse Esparza joke and, you know, Jesse, I can make these types of jokes and like, this is who I am. Yeah. You know, I started used to be in 2009. I was 19 at the time. I didn't know what I was doing, you know, and right. back then there were, it was all white people. I know like it's a broken record by this point, but it was all yeah. white people the only person of color was Eugene Cordero, who I thought was Mexican. And I was like, close enough, you know, but there <laughs> right. was really no one that I could be like, oh, I can craft my career like this person. Cause they were all white. There was a point <laughs> in time I was in advanced study and I was just like, damn, I can't be on the stage. Cause there's no one like me. They don't want me, you know? I and I was in a really, really hard class where everyone was kind of like better than me. You know, and they weren't nice about it. I could name drop right now, but I won't. I'll keep classy, maybe off air. (laughs) Um, But they made me feel really shitty. Like I was a horrible performer, you know, and I was really down and out. I was living in a studio on Hollywood and Highland. And I remember Mm. there was a moment where I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. If they don't want me, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to keep doing it until I get good. You know, I'm like, I was so close to dropping the class. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep doing it and I'm going to get better. And by the time I'm done, I'm going to be better than all of them. You know, and so I just kept going, you know, in that class, I was probably pretty terrible. But I I spent a lot of time and money at UCB just trying to get better and trying to get better. I think when I found my voice, it was after I came out of the closet, you know, cause I was, in, <laughs> I was in the closet for so long. I sure. don't know why, but I was about mm-hmm. like, it was 2013. I was like 23 and I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Everyone al- already assumes this about me. I might as well just, you know, stop denying it. I was on a team called bitchy women. It was all mm-hmm. gay men. And we always played women in scenes, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know? And so we just got together as me, Ben Simon, Mark Rennie, Steve Slaga, and drew tarver mm-hmm. and mono Agapian, you know and i, I think i like, remember what? seeing you guys at uh well i have an interesting story uh about that dcm but yes i remember seeing you guys at the dcm i think uh, yeah and so you know that's the first time where i was like holy shit this is so this is my voice yeah. you know this is who i am and it's not a bad thing you know and so i started leaning into that and i you yeah. know and then you know it, it was off to the races from there did i get on a herald team no did i get on any <laughs> other teams no i started sketch writing and got made my way there but i feel like i started really knocking down walls when i got comfortable with myself and was able to voice that you know and not, yeah. not be afraid that's so interesting because 
I think everybody has that same path. You see who's on, like you just said, you see who's on stage and you're like, well, I'm not like any of these people. There must not be room for me. You know, there must not be a mold for me. I'm not the next, um, you know, uh, Eugene Cordero. I'm not the next mm. Billy Merritt. I'm not the next whoever. Uh, and then you get discouraged, but I'm so happy uh, that you continued uh, your path because uh, everyone's better for it, including yourself. Uh, yeah. Now, what's interesting, what I'm, people get confused by what, when I say this, but I am so envious of um, when, of this moment, of this like declaration of sexuality. So like, I feel like when, you know, like you, you had mentioned your journey about, you know, coming out and people had assumed this about you or not you, you know, you became more comfortable with yourself. But I always think that, you know, people that come out as gay, you have this big, you, you, you're always gay, but you, you, you know, you, mm -hmm. um, you would say, you know, you would tell the world that this necessarily, and those, mm -hmm. those people wouldn't assume it. But I think that's such a strong moment to have, like that big, like declaration uh, to, to have that for yourself as a, as a, like a hinging moment in your life where everything sort of like is anew and that's that's that must be so challenging but also uh rewarding and especially for someone who's you know putting yourself out there constantly with your writing and your performing you know is it do you think it's a coincidence that those two things happen at the same time and what was that like time in your life like yeah i think it's it, for my whole life it's always been a thing of like everyone knew before me you know and i i, I you know, my thing is like, you don't know about me more than I do, you know, <laughs> right, right. you know, I'm gonna prove you wrong. And I think that was it. Most of my life, you know, where I was right. like, No, I like Carmen Electra, you know, and it was just like, <laughs> right. But then at the same time, my whole thing, my whole life was like, you know, I don't want people to think differently of me, you sure. know, in that way. But it, there came a time where I was like, they already do, you know, and you're sure. spending so much time trying to deny it and deflect and you know i were i remember i was in an improv practice and we were describing like our dream mate you know and i was like the mirror you know like I just, you know, that, it just takes so much effort you know yeah. to do that there came a point where i was like everyone already thinks this anyway i might as well just lean into it and just stop denying you yeah. know and see what happens and I feel like, yeah, that's when it really unlocked for me. And that's where I was able to like really be myself and just, you know, live life, <laughs> you know, yeah. having to put all that effort in that part of it of just like, no, not me. And it just felt so great to not have to correct people from then on, you know, because it was just like, mm -hmm, yeah, let's continue on and talk about something else, you know? Yeah, so I think exactly. That, that's what it was like for me. And it, I feel like it was kind of like a weight lifted. That's incredible. And also like, I think this was, this was during the golden age of improv, but it was DCM. <laughs> it was DCM 2015, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. you, you were talking about uh, the improv team that you were on and uh, we were in New York. I was doing, I had done a couple shows with Tim Chang and uh, mm. a couple shows in that uh, like Bruce Springsteen improv, whatever uh, in that festival. And I, this is how, what I remember. I remember, I wasn't sure if you had come out or not yet, but mm -hmm. during the after party, Brad Evans comes up to me and he's like, do you remember that? Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I keep going. So, so this is what happens that night. This isn't about me, but you, you know, uh, <laughs> it has to do with me. So that night I'm making out, we're, we're up on the top, yes. the roof of whatever it is. Gossip Girl. It was like Gossip Girl. <laughs> yes, it was. It was a loft. It was a loft it, in New York City, and it was the coolest thing in my It was amazing. Life. I was like, oh, man, this is great. Like, you know, there's some SNL people over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hanging out with Iffy. I'm hanging out with Carl or, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, all, that whole team. And yeah. uh, hanging out with my friends and Tim Chang, I see, and blah, blah. I started making out with this girl named Kate, Katie. And then Ryan Hitchcock pulls me off of her and he's like, 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 like she didn't want to kiss me, but she had uh -huh. up against the wall. And I was like, okay, what, what that, what's that all about? Then he was like whispering, like talking shit and like pointing at me later, Brad Evans comes over to me and I don't think he had to, anything to do with this because I don't think he saw what happened, but he goes, he goes, Hey, so when are you going to make out with Jesse? Uh, he, it's about time, Brad goes, it's about time he had like, oh God, he said something along the lines of like a, se a male sexual experience. <laughs> and, 
and he was like trying to pimp you out and i i was uh-huh. like i was like oh i i mean uh I didn't know how to answer that because I was like, I was just, did you not just see me over there making out uh-huh. with, what's her name? And <laughs> and I wasn't sure if you had come out or not at that point, but it was very funny. And I think the the year after that, you had a birthday, happy belated yes, birthday. Your yes, birthday is in January. Yes. And uh, you had a birthday and you had, well, you have blonde hair now, but you had just started dyeing your hair. And I had yes. found this blonde wig and I, yes. I tried to dress like you. So I came into the three clubs yeah. Dressed, dressed almost exactly like you and then when I saw, once I saw you on the dance floor we started making <laughs> I, I kissed you yes and then I left <laughs> yes I, I will there. never I will never forget that that was a magical moment in my life I thought that was great and it was beautiful and thank you for that that was so fun <laughs> did you know that Brad Evans was uh was pimping you out at that DCM? No, but we, <laughs> we hung out very closely during sure. that DCM. I was still, I wasn't out then. That was okay. the summer before, Got which it. was okay. very interesting. That was the big summer before. Cause yeah. I think everyone was, uh, Mark Rennie too, was just like, come out already, <laughs> you goddamn faggot. You know, and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Well, I, you know what? I am, uh, I'm happy to have been there for every stage of your journey. And I, I am, uh, it's great to see you have some success uh, writing on TV and uh, especially during this time. And I'm, I just want to say I'm happy to be your friend during, through all, during all that stuff. After all those big struggles that you just, you know, <laughs> had to mention. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's part of the story and, and that's part of what makes you a fascinating person. Also, what's fascinating about you is you're from NorCal, you know, from, from capital, from the capital, from Sacramento. Uh, how does one leave Sacramento at such a young age to come to LA because you're taking UCB classes at 19. When did you, uh, when did you leave Sacramento? Why'd you pick LA? Cause I, as soon as I wanted to, I was like, get the fuck out of here, you know? Yeah. Cause yeah. there's really nothing here, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, famously there's nothing here. And I was, I was 18 working at Starbucks, going to community college here and just not doing anything, you know? And I, yeah. my whole thing was like, I wanted to move to LA, I wanted to write and I wanted to act, but I was like, didn't know the path, you know? I was right. like, maybe mm-hmm. I can train, maybe I can get my under AA degree or whatever, and then go to UCLA or U- USC. Then I was like, I don't wanna go to LA to go to college, you know? Right. I wanna, if I were go, to go to LA, I just wanna move there and live by myself in a studio or something. Mm-hmm. And I was working at Starbucks at the time. Mm-hmm. And this woman was just like, we were closing one night and she was a fascinating person. She had like three kids and it was like 24 or whatever. And she was this like, is in, Sa- in Sacramento, this is in Sacramento. Okay. Yeah. In Sacramento. And she was like, if you want to move to LA, just move to LA. And I was like, <laughs> huh, you're the wisest person I know, you know? And so I was like, you know what? That's right. And I've been saving up money. I was living at home. So I had a, a, a decent amount of money saved up. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I want to move out here. I had a, white cousin who lived in LA at the time, <laughs> lived in Burbank. And I, I only met her a couple of times, but um, you know, we got in contact with her and she was like, yeah, come stay with me for a weekend, you know? And yeah. I was like, cool. So I came out to, she lived in Burbank. So I lived, moved or I visited her for like a weekend, flew out here to LA mm-hmm. and we just went apartment hunting and we found an apartment on Hollywood and Highland, a studio. And she yeah. was like, this is it. You have to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I, you know, and it was such a huge thing. Cause I was like, I never lived anywhere else, you know? And right, I was like, right. and the, the, you know, it's like the lease was for a year. It was at the time, 10 50 a month, which was so expensive. And back then, you know, oh like $1,050 yeah. for a studio. And, but you know, there came a, you know, and I, I called my mom and I was just like, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe I should just come back and like graduate. And she was like, you went there for a reason. You yeah. know, you found an apartment. This is what you wanted to do. Just sign it. And, do it you know damn yeah so i was like okay and then yeah the next month i moved like you know yeah that's i mean i would i would kill for that rent right now and uh similarly i uh you know when i ended up like calling my grandma and i was like i want to move to la and she her response wasn't like oh i'm worried about you it's the other side of the country she was just like 
you know, it's about time. Good for you. Go for it. If you mm-hmm. have, if you have money to do it, then do it. And uh, yeah. I was lucky enough to move out here with friends, but I lived Sunset La Brea, which I thought I was like, oh, this is where everything happens. And you moved to Hollywood and Highland, yes. like behind the Ripley's, believe it or not, dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> like, you must, like, you must have the same thought process. Like, oh yeah, everything's happening in Hollywood, in the middle of the yes. city. Right. Did that, was that your <laughs> thought? Yes, I lived, Madame Tussaud wasn't even open. It wasn't even oh, built, Madame then, but I lived up oh, the street, really? up the street from the Wax Museum, you know? So I was yeah. probably 20 steps from the Walk of Fame, you know? Amazing. And for me, I was like, holy shit, this is where it happens, you know? And it was just, it, for me, I, I loved it. I loved the two years that I lived there. It was so cool. I loved it. And I worked on the Sunset Strip which was, that's where it was really cool. Cause like, you know, there's billboards that had videos on them, you know, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? Right. And it's like Saddle Ranch and they were filming oh, yeah. a VH1 show about Saddle Ranch at Saddle Ranch, you know? And I was like, <laughs> of course, I'm yeah. gonna be, I'm gonna be an extra on that show. Like it was just, it was <laughs> everything uh, that I thought it would be and more, you know? So I was hyped, I was very excited. That's hilarious. So the first segment, uh, the first thing I want to know about NorCal, about Sacramento, you know, when you moved down here, you definitely, you know, since you grew up in NorCal, you had some of that, uh, some of that slang from that NorCal slang. Was there, was there anything that like has stuck with you or what's like the NorCal slang uh, that you still use today or like slang that you've uh, retired? Yeah, you know, hell, you you sent an email and I was like, right, you know, Hella is big in NorCal. I oh, said, you know, do you still say, say Hella? Not really, and like okay. Hecka, Hecka, because you can't Hecka? say Hell, Hecka. <laughs> that's Hecka cool. In Sometimes like what I church <laughs> youth group? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went, Peter. I went to a private Christian school my whole life. You know, oh. like you can't say Hell, but yeah, yeah. I, I went to a public. I went to a private Catholic high school, and. uh You'd be surprised at the shit we got away with. Uh, but that was in Florida. <laughs> that was in Florida. So who knows? You know, I, I don't know. I don't catch myself saying it, but maybe I do. Like having it roll off my tongue, like, oh, that's heck of cool. Like that, that, it seems not foreign, you know? So I probably uh, do say it. Have you ever um, heard of um, uh, uh, flagging? Like, oh, someone, no. oh, you're flagging. That was our thing in Florida. Like we would use flagging uh, like for anything, like, like instead of like flaking. Like oh you're flagging like oh I'm ah oh, no I'm no I'm gonna flag like no I'm I'm gonna flag I'm not gonna go to that I'm gonna flake out on that or flat like flagging meaning like like oh you're tripping or you're uh you're wilding out you're being ridiculous you're flagging right now like you're going crazy Did you guys no, have no I never crap? never heard that we well, you guys have hiking I, right yeah that's more Bay Area that's more San Fran Oakland okay. you know which is not no I don't know anything about that and. <laughs> I'm trying to think of slang, but I don't know. Oh God, people say that's bomb. Like that's the um, bomb, but without Bill? the, like that's bomb. Yeah, oh, like, right, right, right. Damn, damn, this Chipotle is bomb. You know, like <laughs> of course they talk about Chipotle like that because there's nothing else here. Um, I, I don't know if y'all is a Sacramento thing, but I say that a lot. I, I feel, feel like, like that's, I feel like y'all is one of those terms that obviously it's associated with the South, but it's such a catch-all, like, especially yeah. with, like, um, binary or bi- non-binary people. It's like, I, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, misrepresent somebody. So I'm like, hey, y'all, like, instead of, like, yeah. saying, hey, guys, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we use that, too. We use that, too. So, yeah. Y'all, how- are, y'all are hecka crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is bomb. This is bomb. <laughs> uh, okay, next thing I want um, to get into headlines, and this is one of my favorite segments. So, basically, I'm going to read a headline. And in the first round, you'll argue why it did happen in Sacramento. And I'll, act, okay. I'll argue why it did happen in Florida. Uh, and then the second round, you'll argue why there's no way that it could have happened in Sacramento. And then I'll argue how it's impossible it happened in Florida. And then in the third round, you'll guess. Uh, and if you get it right, then... Um, you'll kiss uh, me on the lips again. I'll kiss you on the lips <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You name the, the date and time. I'll do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and okay, perfect. So this is the, this is the headline, uh, at this NBA arena, bomb sniffing dog, or excuse me, at this NBA arena, coronavirus sniffing dogs will greet, uh, attendees. Got it. So you guys have the Kings. Yes. Sacramento Kings. Yes. 
Uh, and in Florida, there's the Orlando Magic and the Miami Heat. Uh, so at yes. one of these arenas, they have coronavirus sniffing dogs. Okay. Now, why this would happen in Sacramento, I mean, I'll bury the lead. I don't think this would happen in Sacramento. But sure, why sure. this would happen yeah. in Sacramento is because there is an arena here. Yeah. It is home to the Sacramento Kings. And that's the only reason why I think it would happen in Sacramento. <laughs> Do you guys have like a, a tech boom? Is there like Silicon-ish, Valley-ish types of businesses up there or not really? I've read about it. I'm not really seeing it right now, but... I, you know, they, we just got the Golden One Center, you know, which is smack dab in the middle of downtown. And that's like, you know, bringing up new buildings and stuff. But mm -hmm. maybe in the next 10 years. But right now, I don't I don't think so. I think so. Really uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I why this would happen in Florida is for me, I think I, I just think it's 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 bullshit. Like <laughs> there's no <laughs> way there's no way a dog can come up and sniff if I have coronavirus or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I just think it's like in Florida, there's a lot of false security that people talk about or that, um, that is like pushed on you. Like for instance, with coronavirus, there's underreporting of the virus. So, mm -hmm. Hey, come to this basketball game and pay for tickets. And uh, don't worry. Uh, no, you're not going to get COVID here because we have dogs that will sniff out the COVID. <laughs> That's uh -huh. such a snake oil, like bullshit, like yeah. thing that like people in Florida would believe like, oh yeah, well didn't, didn't you, oh, oh yeah, I, uh, I, I got drunk at the bar the other day. Oh, you went inside? Yeah, no, there's like a couple <laughs> Corona sniffing dogs there. It's fine. <laughs> um, why do you, I mean, you already mentioned uh, your disbelief, but why do you think that it's impossible that this would happen? Yeah. In, okay. Uh, here we go. There are many reasons. I feel like people <laughs> in Sacramento don't care about coronavirus I really feel like they wouldn't i feel like they wouldn't even you know care to hire dogs second i from what i know people don't like dogs you know or they're scared of dogs <laughs> in sacramento you know? i think so so i i feel like people would be scared of any type of dog coming near them you know they'd be like get that dog away from me i don't want them anywhere near me or they're gonna attack me you know is I that like the response to your dog no, no. Oh, okay. I, I feel like in, in my neighborhood, I, maybe it's just my family, but we were always raised to like be afraid of dogs because I think oh. there might have, been, might have been a dog attack here or there, but there are always stray dogs around the neighborhood, right. you know, and like I, I was chased by one as a kid, you know, I don't, and I don't know if it was like dangerous or if it just wanted to play. You know, because nowadays in LA, you know, everyone's like, make out with my dog, roll around with her on the floor. He'll <laughs> love you, you know, but I feel like here there's more of like a, a, a fear-based thing around dogs you know where it's like that dog will it's judge judy you know it's a lot of judge <laughs> that dog will rip your face off it has jaws that lock it'll kill you you know so i feel like that's another reason why like people would not want a dog anywhere near them in you know in an arena or anything like that <laughs> um, yeah i think that's the main reason why it okay. would not happen in sacramento <laughs> what happened what what do you remember of uh getting chased by a dog when you were when you were younger well, me and my happened. grandma would walk to the grocery store, which is like a couple blocks up the street, you know, yeah. so we would walk and she always pushed a stroller. I don't know why. I think it helped with her walking. But was, I What was in the stroller? What was in the stroller? Nothing. <laughs> there was nothing? It was just an empty stroller? That's, that's even more concerning than a woman with a bad back. Like that's the, or a, a vicious okay. dog. There's no, she there's would, nobody in that stroller. She would put groceries in it and then. Okay. You know, Right. But okay, Mark. now that I'm, you know, now that I'm saying it out loud, it is kind of weird. But, you know, don't call my family weird, Peter. I didn't, but, yeah, I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember once we were walking home and there was like a dog that was following us. You know, I don't yeah. think it was mean or anything, but, you know, looking, 2020 is everything. Sure, sure. Looking back by hindsight. But like it was a thing where she was very scared and she was like pushing it away with her car or her shopping. Not her shopping cart, but her stroller. Stroller, yeah. And like it would it followed us for a couple of blocks, and she would always be like, "Get away, you know, get behind me, it's okay." And like trying to fed him off with a little, you know, stroller. How old are you, how old are you at this point? 
Mm, ten or younger. Wow. Like okay. Eight or nine. Yeah, yeah. And this um, dog will not stop bullying you, essentially. No, but my now looking <clears throat> back, Peter, I'm like it probably just wanted a little pet. <laughs> probably, <laughs> pet, you know, probably wanted some loving. But um, it was a kind of a big dog. It might have been like a pit bull or a Rottweiler. But yeah, so she was fending it off with her stroller, you know. And so that's a vivid memory I have. Yeah. So that's fascinating. In Sacramento, when you were younger, you got chased by a dog. Around the same age, I was in Cub Scouts and uh, in Florida, and I got chased by a kid named Todd Vickers with a pocket knife that was threatening oh. to, to stab me. <laughs> this all adds up. This all adds it all, up. It all adds up. And I'm pretty sure, you know, knowing him and uh, his family, I'm pretty sure they pushed a few strollers with nothing in them, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> oh my god don't say it like it's a bad thing <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, why could this not happen in florida i uh i you know if it is if the technology is real i don't think corona sniffing dogs would first hit florida florida isn't hit by anything florida <laughs> doesn't get the first of anything except for cuban cigars uh cuban immigrants <laughs> and, and uh cocaine those are like the only three things that Miami or, or Florida has uh, first. Uh, we're on the, the back end of everything. I think, I think they just discovered frozen yogurt there. <laughs> um, and okay, so uh, last round, go ahead and guess which, uh, uh, where, where it happened. Did it happen in Florida or did it happen in Sacramento? Florida, definitely. Yeah, you're right. It ha this happened in Miami. <laughs> That's what they're telling people at the Miami Heat games. Like, come on in. It's, uh, it's safe. We've got coronavirus sniffing dogs. Uh, <laughs> and escape the craziness. Uh, now, Jesse, before I get you out of here, uh, we talked a lot about Sacramento, talked a little bit about Florida. Uh, if somebody should find themselves in Sacramento, what's one thing that they should do uh, or one place that they should find that you like? Okay. This is a great question, Peter. This is good. You know <laughs> – Okay, give me a second. Sure, it, sure. You know, because there's a there's a popular place called Old Sacramento. You know, okay, Old and Sacramento. That's where you go, and it's like from the old old days, and it's like wood. And everything's wood, and you know, it's like Old like Vegas. From, yeah, like old Vegas. But it's very very small. There's a lot of like water taffy stores, you know, and there's probably like okay. a horse galloping around, pushing, you know, carrying people on a carriage. But that's like all it's known for. Yeah. I want to recommend something that's not as well known. Have you been to Albuquerque, um, New Mexico? It sounds no. a lot like Albuquerque. It sounds a lot like Albuquerque. Yeah. Uh, that ex same thing is happening in Albuquerque right now. Yeah. So I would suggest, okay, okay. So go to old Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> for a moment, for a moment, you were like, should I even tell people the cool? I feel like, I feel like there's something cool that you don't want people to know about. And so you're like, nah, let's have all the tourists go to old Sacramento. No, that's truly <laughs> all there is. Whenever I come, like, it's literally like, we, let's go to Arden Mall. Okay, let's go sure. to Roseville Mall. Sure. Okay, let's go to the downtown mall. It's like there's just malls. And like that, that's basically all there is. I was going to suggest a neighborhood, but I don't even know if it's a nice neighborhood. It's just like a neighborhood. You, Do you have, how, would, how many malls are in your area? It sounds like there's a lot of malls. There are, there's, they're all shut down is the thing. You <laughs> right know? now, yeah. There was a huge, no, 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 <laughs> even before this, because oh. like, there's a lot of like, I don't know, gang violence. There was one <laughs> near me that like I looked up, but it, it's called Florin Mall. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it got shut down because of, you know, there was like shootings every weekend or something, you know, yeah. so that got shut down. The downtown mall was like kind of like, it was like a mini kind of grove. Not okay. really, but it was like an outdoor mall. It was oh, kind yeah. of like a mini, a mini Westfield Century City Mall. But was that safe? And no, no. <laughs> That got shut down too because I think of violence, like, you know, shootings and stuff. Right. So right now the only two big malls are Arden Mall, which is on its way to getting shut down because the last time I went, let me tell you, I was visiting and I was like, <laughs> let's go to Forever 21. And like, as, the, as soon as like I got there, I see like a huge, you know, group of policemen running to the food court. And I'm like, oh, there's a fucking fight going on. Oh, yeah. there's free donuts <laughs> at the food court again. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> they were there to break up a huge fight. You know, and I was like, I'm home, baby. So Arden Mall is probably on its last legs. And then the 
there's one that's kind of far from me called Roseville Mall, and that's kind of like a bougie, more like upscale mall. And so that's the probably going to be the last one that's going to make it through this pandemic. All right. Well, hey, I'll, uh, if I'm ever in Sacramento, I'll check out Old Town or Old Town Sacramento, and then I'll go on a little mall tour. What uh, what's there and what's not there? Got it. What's Love left? <laughs> uh, all right, Jesse. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And uh, Flirtians, thanks so much for listening. I'll talk to you next time.